you remember how earlier we're talking about their state, like group one, which is like data that's typed out and submitted to us, but then there's group two, stuff behind the scenes. Cookie consents are to manage the stuff behind the scenes, to get mm -hmm. consent first before we let those things behind the scenes run. I Whereas see. A contact form is more that other group where they're typing out their data. So that's not really involving a cookie consent. Okay. What I would say is a good practice is always having a checkbox that says, I agree to the privacy policy. Granted, gotcha. not all laws require that, but just for simple purposes, if you're like, I don't want to think any further, what should I do? Add a checkbox to your, pri your contact forms that say, I agree to the privacy policy, because that gives you a timestamp the moment someone consented to your privacy policy when submitting their data to you. Welcome to the Web Design Business Podcast with your host, Josh Hall, helping you build a web design business that gives you freedom and a lifestyle you love. Hello, friends. Here with you to discuss and dive into probably the most fun aspect of web design, privacy policies. Yes, something that I've talked about on the podcast. Well, I've had guests on the podcast to enlighten me and other web designers around the world about how to protect ourselves with privacy policies, how to stay compliant with what's going on right now with privacy laws in different states, countries abroad, and of course, the EU with all the GDPR compliance stuff going on. And today, uh, at the time of this release, a little after halfway through 2024, there's been a lot of things changing and going on in the world of website privacy policies. So, so excited to bring back on, you know, if you've been listening to the show for a while, you know who this is, Hans Skillrude of Termageddon, which is the privacy policy uh, auto updating tool that I use personally for my site at joshhall.co. My agency uses it for our maintenance plans. We use it as an upsell for maintenance plans to make sure every one of our clients has a privacy policy that's auto updated. And you can do that as well. But if you have a lot of questions about what is privacy policy and how does that work on websites? What do you need to do to make sure your clients and your website itself is compliant? How do you sell it? How do you package these up? Um, if you're curious about the difference between privacy on submitted data through like contact forms versus behind the scenes data, which is, you know, for cookie consents and things like that, then this conversation I think is really going to help you out. Hans is a wealth of knowledge on this and is always really transparent. And my favorite thing about Hans is this could be like the most boring topic ever in web design, but somehow Hans makes it fun. So here we go. Here's Hans of Termageddon talking, selling website privacy, privacy policies for you and your clients. And we do a bit of a one on you know, like a one one on what privacy is and, and what it covers. And if you have not yet, checked out term again, make sure to use my link if you would, because you'll get some additional resources and you'll get, I think right now they're giving two free agency license. Uh, anyway, there's a special offer for you. Go to joshhall.co slash term again. If you're having trouble spelling that like I probably would just go to the show notes for this episode, which will be found at joshhall.co slash three, three, four. And you can check that out and upsell it again. Yes, it's a small subscription fee to Termageddon, but you upsell it on your hosting and maintenance plan for all of your clients and it, it benefits them too. So highly recommend it. Oh, and before we dive in, if you're catching this before Hans presents, he's actually going to be our guest speaker in July of 2024 in Web Designer Pro, where he's going to do a much more in-depth visual look at privacy policies and a lot of what we talk about here more visually along with a live Q&A. So make sure if you haven't already, join Web Designer Pro. And if you're catching this later on, you'll be able to see the replay of that guest expert training. All right, here's Hans. Let's talk privacy policies. You know how yeah. it rolls. I'm going to work right. the shot bong in at some point. <laughs> of course you will. I, I, I should have a prop ready to go, actually. My, Dang it. my goal, <laughs> my goal for every conversation with you is to work in the yeah, shot bong, <laughs> even if it's out of left field. There, there's been a few partners over the years that are like, oh, I, I heard you invented shot bong. I'm like, how do you know this? And they're like, Josh told me. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. so great. Classic. Oh, <laughs> I feel honored. The, you know, the owner of the shot bong and 
<laughs> Subsequently, the owner of Term again. I love how you just went from like left field to right field, like completely, you know. Yeah, for sure. I used to be quite a different person. Um, yeah. So, but I, I'm happy. This this Term again's a lot calmer of a business. You know, I'm not going to 50 fraternities. Um, you know, over a few months, and 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 yeah, I'm. I, what was it? 50 colleges, 200 fraternities over six months. Um, yeah, it, it was. Uh, it was something. <laughs> It was, it was it, you live a calmer life now, but I imagine it's a more, uh, maybe da- not a dangerous life, but a more complex life now. I would imagine with privacy, right? For sure. Yeah. That, like, um, it with, ter- with shop I was concerned that like, people were going to over drink themselves. Um, and then with, uh, you know, what term again, I, I'm always stressed out. Like, uh, you know, um, Oh, do we ever miss anything? But, but the stresses of, do we miss anything has kind of been removed just cause like we have like thousands of law firms using us at this point. So feel pretty good that our product has been battle tested. Whereas shot bong, it could be any night that someone's just chugging, you know, 15 <laughs> shots of vodka. In I'm that sure thing. there are plenty of lawyers who would still take you up on shot bong too. Yes. Yeah. I feel like that one's got more, uh, more downside. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You lose a case. That's, that's the downsell. That's like, they lose a case and then that's the shot bong. You send, you send them the shot bong afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> or it's the uh, it's it's even you know if they win a case it's shot bong it yeah. the shot bong really is for all life's that's true situations that's a good way to good a good way to look at it yeah I'm gonna be the new CEO for shot bong in my next endeavor <laughs> I can so, tell we can relaunch that thing we're together. gonna keep it's this good. entire intro in by the by the that's way Hans because this is pretty good so <laughs> from shot bong to privacy and terms and lo- legal lawsuits for websites. Uh, We've been on the podcast a few times, so we're going to, we don't need to rehash your story or anything, but what's going on now? 2024, halfway through this year. Um, yeah. What's the landscape like now of online lawsuits, privacy, all that stuff? Well, I'm, I'm happy you clarified that question because I thought you were talking about alcohol still and wanted to talk about shop on. Um, so <laughs> stronger than ever. <laughs> so, yeah, things are great. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, you know, uh, in the, compliance world, um, our industry is getting more regulated, you know, since the time we've done another or since our last recording, I think about seven or eight privacy laws have gone into effect. Um, and since we, when we agreed to book this recording, uh, four more laws have been passed, um, that will go into effect later this year or, or in, um, 2025. So, you know, the, the web industry is getting regulated, whether we want to accept that or not is up to us as agency owners, but, on paper, it's being regulated. And, and, you know, what, what's happening here is, you know, people's names, their email addresses, their phone numbers, this is all personal information. And that's what governments around the world are trying to regulate and protect. And that's not a bad thing. I mean, that's a good thing. The vast majority of people I meet are, they want people to have privacy rights. It's just, you know, as website owners, we want to launch a website and have it be accessible to people from all over. Um, but the, the fact is privacy implications can then occur. And um, 2024 has not been any exception. Um, in fact, I would say it's a little bit more concerning than ever before. Um, right before recording this, I, I wanted to make sure we covered SIPA, for, exam, for example, the uh, California Invasion of Privacy Act, um, a 30-year-old privacy law, uh, which was intended, I mean, just to put that in perspective, 30 years ago, that was means that this law existed before even Google existed. Uh, but this law got passed um, back in the day to protect people from tracking technologies associated with phone calls. Um, and basically, it was like, hey, if you're tracking, if you're... Um, having phone calls with Californians and you're secretly recording like those calls through like third party tracking technologies, you could be sued um, if you didn't get proper consent first. Well, turns out there's an attorney out there in California suing business owners left and right, uh, website owners who are using tracking technologies on their website without properly getting consent from their website <laughs> visitors. And we is have reason Zipa, to think that they, yeah, yeah. Is that CIPA, the Child That's correct. Internet Protection Act? Uh, no, uh, the California Invasion of Privacy Act. So, oh, oh gosh, I know there's so many the other name. Oh no, yep, yeah, yeah, they're gonna and it, just like California, uh, what is it? CPA, the Colorado Privacy Act, and I think it's the uh, there's another CPA out there. I forget which other uh, off the top of my head wh- what that acronym also stands for. But but yeah, there's so many privacy laws that we have matching ac- um, uh, abbreviations now for them. So okay, so oh, so this is so SIPA, the Children's Internet. Protection, Protection Act, Act, which is great, protects people from seeing stuff they shouldn't on the internet or yes. shop on videos, stuff like that. <laughs> but uh, 
So this one's California based. Okay. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah. And, and just like all privacy laws, it protects Californians. So it doesn't matter where you're located. So, you know, if you have any sort of tracking technology installed in your website and you're getting traffic from California, you could be at risk of, of these, you know, I hate to say it, but ambulance chasers, um, targeting website owners, like, and that's what, and I do mean that. And, and I don't mean to offend anyone, but you know, I'm married to an attorney for one, but, uh, <laughs> But the reality is this law was created for phone call tracking and someone's recently reinterpreted to target website owners. And what is a tracking script? My gosh, it could be so many things. I mean, it's it's a YouTube video embed for all things. YouTube emb embeds uh, trackers just to understand, you know, what is this website uh, viewer watching and what's their interest and everything like that. Tracking is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just What's frustrating now is that we have this law that could result in people getting sued. And and there's big companies in our blog article where we cover this. We talk about how there's big companies like CNN, Stitch Fix, DoorDash, who've already gotten fined massively for, or sued massively for this. But also um, – I'm directly aware of several agency partners who've called me saying that their customers have gotten to their non term again customers have gotten these demand letters where they're wanting $5,000 per website visitor whose rights were infringed upon from California. So, I mean, it's just like you get 10 visitors from California. I'm out of business, you know, like that would be terrible. So anyways, um, long story short, um, we saw this happening. Uh, we released coverage for it. Um, at the time of this recording, uh, we stand as the only generator to be actively uh, covering SIPA. And, I, and in my mind, I feel like that's just such a good demonstration of like, we're constantly monitoring these stuff, these changes. Yeah, and you like, guys are on it. Yeah. Well, thank you. And and yeah, we'd, we'd, we'd rather overdo it than underdo it when it comes to this, because we'd rather give people the option to add these features to their site to rather than not recommend at least considering it and then they end up getting sued so so yeah we took action we released compatibility we currently still stand as the only generator to be covering this um and i don't want to get too much in the weeds here but if you're sitting there being like well what's cpra doesn't cpra require a cookie consent banner it does but sipa california's other privacy law requires you to be opted out by default. And what that means is that California has two completely conflicting privacy laws uh, when it comes to getting consent. So California, you got to love them. You know, you got to love the regulations over there. They're keeping us in business. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> well, and it, I'll say for every web designer who's probably thinking like both of us, where it's like, this is such a freaking pain in the ass. Why mm -hmm. is, you know, my life's difficult enough building websites and handling clients and everything else. But I, I do try to find the positive in this as the user. And I think about like right now, I am getting so many dang jank texts and calls about medical insurance. Somehow yeah. my information got out to, and I don't know, I had, we did have to change our family medical insurance because mm. our premium doubled from last year. I'm like, this is ridiculous. It's more than our mortgage. So I was like, we got to figure something else out. I don't know if in my search on that, if somehow my data was exposed, maybe that's very possible. But I, I mean, honestly, Hans, like probably at least two or three times a week, I'm getting texts and calls that are like, we offer the best solutions for medical insurance. And yeah, it's just all spammy. Jank, it's like, terrible. Yeah, it's so terrible. I, not I'm to mention just, all these companies who have the kind all, of thing that can yeah, happen, right? A hundred percent. And think of it like your data at some point was submitted somewhere, and then they just took your data. As an Ohio resident, you don't have any privacy rights right now, so they mm. can't. You can't. You can't even tell them get rid of my data. They don't have to honor it, which is just gotcha. the gnarliest thing. Maybe under HIPAA because you are dealing with medical, so maybe maybe there's something there. But your data has now been shared with how many? Who knows how many third parties who are who have your medical data and are soliciting you, like. And it's first and foremost annoying, but secondly, like not everyone wants their medical data to be owned and operated by third party companies who are then soliciting, trying to make profit, profit off that fact. It's just disgusting. Like, and granted, like when I started term again, I was just an agency owner who was sick and tired of not knowing what to do for website policies. You know, like that being said, I've, I've gone full on into the privacy realm running term again with my wife. And so now I'm, I'm coming from more of us these days. I'm more. I'm more interested in the privacy mm -hmm. rights that people are getting and I, I, and I care more about it, but for the average person, I think really term again is a means to an end. And that's fine. If that's, if that's all they want in terms of their journey with us, that's great. But I find myself more and more passionate about like wanting to just 
ensure that privacy laws actually protect people, that they're, they don't encourage ambulance chasers to just start attacking people. And most importantly, it stops the phone calls and text messages of companies who should not have your data, having your data and trying to do it, it, it the worst case scenario, profit driven thing, you know, um, profit driven things like, um, to, to try to try to sway you into purchasing things. So and it's interesting. I did not know anyone personally who had had a lawsuit from some sort of privacy mm -hmm. issue until I have a, a friend of mine who <clears throat> worked for a couple of different agencies here in town and they had designed a site for a big nationwide franchise. Mm. And then that company got sued after they launched their website because they were missing alt text on images. Mm. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I think there was some other privacy stuff in there too. It was like, it wasn't a massive deal, but it was a $10,000 fine. And the, the, you know, it wasn't a make or break to this franchise. Frankly, it sure. would have been like us paying, you know, a hundred bucks probably, but it was still, I don't know how much they charged that website, but a 10 K on top of something is just a fine is a big deal. So all that to say, like, I know these aren't fear tactics. And, um, I know some people are like, yeah, that there, a lot of people are, are, playing fear tactics with that industry. Yes. But I know you and Donata, like you guys are not, that is, that is not your game. That is not your style. Like I know this is actually a pretty dang serious thing. Yeah, no, for sure. And I think with uh, missing alt text, that is related to accessibility lawsuits, which that's are true. Not, yeah, that's not the same as privacy. Um, privacy lawsuits they, and fines, they don't really make the headlines as much. I mean, you, you, you see the news about Facebook getting fined a billion dollars or Google getting fined a billion dollars here or there. Um, but the reality is there are one person companies getting dinged for this stuff. It's just, it hasn't really made the headlines like accessibility lawsuits have. Granted, it's not as it's not happening as much as accessibility lawsuits right now. And, and that's, that's kind of what interesting. So those are more prevalent than privacy lawsuits. Yes. Yeah. Accessibility lawsuits. I always say is about three, four years ahead of privacy lawsuits. Like really? what we're, yeah, what we're seeing. I would have thought they've been swapped. I would have thought so too, because privacy laws have exist. Well, actually no accessibility laws have existed longer technically, I think. So Either way, mm -hmm. I think um, what matters here is that these are regulations, it, both accessibility privacy, and privacy. I think privacy personally is a few years behind. I think it's only a matter of time until there's like more and more of these ambulance chasers. I think this is the first year we've started to see them come out. Um, also, the fines that are being issued are certainly concerning. And, and yeah, I, I hate being the one to be doing the fear-based approach. I know our name is Termageddon, which almost is meant to be fear, but it's more so meant to be fun and like trying to make it lighthearted and like, all right, let's figure out a solution here. Um, and it, I think for us, it's like just a balancing act because we want to state facts, but we don't want to like overdo it. Where we're like trying to scare people in like, you know, I think really what it comes down to it is as agency owners, I don't want it on my conscious that I did, I made a legal decision for my client. Like I don't mm -hmm. want to be thinking to myself, Oh, my clients are too small for this. So I'm not even going to bring it up. Like that's where I think a mistake gets made. I, I really feel like it should be the agency should explain to their clients like, Hey, I help build contact forms for you. I help install the analytics tools. These are good examples where you're collecting data, like names and emails that's regulated you may need policies for your website and let the client decide from there what they want to do about it. And, and Josh, I know, you know, but we have that waiver that makes it just incredibly easy just to copy and paste and send it to clients. But I really believe that, you know, the websites we build today are going to be facing the laws of tomorrow. So like get the documentation in place that you educated your client that, Hey, even though I built these tools for you that help you collect data, I'm not responsible for compli for you complying with laws. Like it's your responsibility. Is that waiver a part of a Termageddon account, remind me, or is that something free that we could offer as like a template or something? Um, we can do both. So so by default, we offer to our agency partners. Um, so like if, if you go to joshhall.co slash Termageddon, you'll be brought to our form where um, you not just get one free license, but you get two free licenses, but Termageddon and then the ability to resell or refer our solution. But that's when you'll get kind of like a treasure trove of pre-written assets that we've written up. Um, just things that agencies have asked me to for to create for them over the years. Um, so we publicly list them, but I'll also add a link just because if someone's like, I don't want to deal with term again, Hans sounds way too spastic of a person for me to work with. Like, cool. Just take the waiver and, and just get rid of the parts that mentioned term again. And uh, that's totally fine. <laughs> oh, I would love to include that in the show notes for anyone cool. who's not yet using term again. So yeah, absolutely. And it kind of reminds me oddly of uh, my maintenance and hosting and security plan that I did for clients. Like for anyone who hasn't been through my maintenance plan course, there's all sorts of things you can call a, a support plan or a care plan. But I always 
back in the day was maintenance and security. And same thing, I tried not to do the fear-based approach talking about security, but the reality was I had sites that got hacked and got taken down because we didn't have any monitoring or security on them. So in the same way, I feel like it's very similar to, to Termageddon. It's like you're, you're not pushing something unnecessary. You're, you're, you're having, you have a service because there are things that can happen, whether there are few and far between or less than accessibility. My case right now is a perfect example of somehow my data got out and I'm getting multiple calls a week for health insurance. Like I'm all set. I don't need it. Stop. <laughs> I'm about to change my number. I'm, it's almost to that point. So for sure. And yeah. when we're, when, when we're knowingly in an industry that's regulated and we're choosing not to bring it up because we don't think it's a big deal or, oh, like my clients are too small for this. You've just made a legal decision for your client. Like why that is, in my opinion, as you build out more and more sites running all on that same logic, it's just a matter of time. So till someone gets dinged. Um, and my thought is like, be the one to take the step forward to educate your clients about these regulations so that they understand it's their responsibility to comply with laws. Like not only are you professionally representing yourselves because no one can deny the fact these things are legally required. You're protecting yourself with documentation and hopefully giving your clients the opportunity to not get fined or sued. Um, you know, because, and I always feel like it's, it's the time that I don't recommend it, that my clients get like something in trouble that always happens. Like I always feel like when I don't recommend something, that's when something goes wrong. So there's mm -hmm. always, there's always that too to consider. <laughs> I, th I think it might be helpful to, for those, whether they're new or established as a web designer, to talk about the different, like, I guess, pri like the leaky areas of a website that are, are privacy focused. So you yeah. mentioned contact forms, um, tracking. What other areas of a website are red flags or um, pain, pain points for privacy, potential privacy issues? Yeah. So, um, so privacy policy exists to comply with privacy laws and some privacy laws require a cookie policy and a cookie consent solution. But I'm going to answer your question, but kind of keep all three of those assets in mind, a privacy policy, a cookie policy and a cookie consent solution. So, um, I, I wouldn't say the, and also, um, I, I wouldn't say the red flags. I would just say that modern websites are built to generate leads and make constant improvements to the website. Um, I don't think, th I don't think anything is wrong. I don't think collecting data is wrong. I think that's a great thing, but, um, um, let's, let's start off with the first one, a contact form. You know, when you ask people to submit their name and email, names and emails are regulated under every single privacy law. Every single privacy law regulates the collection of personal information, which includes names and emails. So when you're building features on a website that collect data, whether it's typed out through like a contact form, or maybe it's collected behind the scenes through analytics, um, tools, tracking pixels, advertising um, features. Um, we're collecting data and that's when the alarm bells should be going off that, ah, I'm building something for this customer where they now may need to comply with laws. And that's where the waiver comes into place. Um, the main items that I see as an agent or as someone who works with agency partners is forms, which not only typically collect data, but they also share that data. Because when someone submits right. a contact form, I always ask the customer, do you receive an email in your inbox with that person's contact details? They always say yes. And I always say, well, that's a good example of sharing data with your email service provider. So contact forms are not only where you're collecting data, you're actually sharing that data with your email service provider, whether it's Gmail, G Suite, Outlook, any third-party email system. Um, the second place is email newsletter subscriptions um, or digital downloads, like download our digital asset. Um, and then there's e-commerce, of course, collecting uh, sensitive data, um, sharing that data with payment processors and so forth. Um, and that's all data that's typed out and submitted to us. That's like part number one. Then there's part number two. Part number one, where people are typing stuff out, I feel like that's a lot more easy to understand because it's like, oh, someone types it out and submits it to me. Okay, I'm collecting and sharing that data. Easy. Part number two is where it's like stuff behind the scenes to make the website a great experience or make improvements to the website. And that's where things, I think, get a little tricky for us because as agency owners, we've been getting all these free products from companies like Google and Facebook to implement into our website. We embed YouTube videos, reCAPTCHA, Google Maps, Vimeo videos. Um, there's so many features we embed into the website, whether it's visible on the front end, like a video embed, or invisible, but um, being collected behind the scenes, like Google Analytics. And that's where things get a little more, bit more hairy. But just in general, those are features that collect IP address, device information, and information regarding people's interactions with the website for the purposes of analytics, security, and advertising. And that's yet another segment where data is being collected. And there's privacy laws that can apply to you because of that. So 
a privacy policy, a cookie policy, a cookie consent solution. Those are all things that are needed under the laws that apply to you. Um, and they need to make specific statements. And, and really, that's what Termagun's out to do. We're there to find the laws that apply to you, provide the disclosures you're required to make. And then what's unique is like push updates to your policies whenever these laws change or new ones go into effect. So, you know, I think I think what Termagun introduced to the world was that like policies can't be the static thing we just put on a site and forget about. Like, no, Things are changing. More laws are passing. Fines are increasing. Number of fines are increasing. Number of lawsuits are increasing. You have to have a means to keep this up to date over time. And, and that's obviously what we're trying to do with Termageddon for clients. Well, what you just laid out there was like the perfect overview video of uh, what privacy is on a website, the different levels. I actually really appreciate that visual of like the front end of privacy and then the kind of the back end is a little bit hidden tracking things that you wouldn't see or you're not actually submitting. So that's actually for really sure. helpful for me to clarify Good. for clients too. So they understand like there's two levels. There really is kind of a, a front end and a back end, just like on a website. There's the front end, there's the, the copy, the images, the design, and then there's the code behind that. Yes. Stuff you're, you're not seeing. That's so good. You, you guys started out with the, the, the embed privacy update, mm -hmm. like that updates automatically. That's what was, what got me turned on in term again. Cause I was somewhat familiar with privacy and I was like, am I going to have to update this myself? every week or every month no way so thank goodness there's the auto generated privacy you guys have the cookie consent forms and that option now i know you're cooking up something else do you want to kind of shed light on what this next big piece that you guys are up to for sure and, and and i also want to know one term again license also includes a disclaimer a terms and an end user license agreement if you need it so all mm. so that's one thing we're really focused on we, we try to set up a pricing where well, it's $119 a year, um, and our agency partners can buy it wholesale, one at a time, or they can just offer their affiliate promo code to their clients and receive recurring commissions. Um, but that price point includes absolutely everything to protect a website. So like for everything from privacy to terms to cookie, disclaimer, all that stuff. So um, I just want to note that. And yeah, um, we are 23 months in the works, um, but we are about to record or release our new app. Um, it's it's so much around the corner that uh, I think between when we're recording this and when I believe you're planning to push this live, we should have it released. So we're really excited about that because, um, I mean, Josh, we've been working long enough together. You know that I've worked with quite a few agency partners over the years and I've had calls with, I'm not kidding, Thousands, thousands of customers. Um, so we've learned a couple things and, and uh, we made the decision to rebuild the app to kind of support where we see the future be going. Um, major UI improvement. And, um, and yeah, the new app is going to serve as the foundation to where the direction we want to take the company. So, um, you know, this isn't coming when with the first release, but it's coming right after, but we're going to launch throughout the EU. Um, I know we've had a lot of customers asking about that. Uh, we're going to implement a, um, a scanning feature to help expedite the setup process uh, mm. for both our reseller and affiliate partners and their clients of course um and yeah, the, the, and, the, <laughs> and actually, uh, Termaguider is coming as well. That's coming right out the gate with the new launch. But, uh, every single question within our tool has like a 10 second clip of me explaining how to answer that question. So like, if you don't know how to best answer a question, basically there's a video a helper right on page that's called Termaguider. And it's me kind of explaining like, you know, this is how people answer this and stuff like that. So that's just good. a lot of nice features. We're hoping that helps expedite the setup, right? Provides education and has people feeling great about their product. Uh, about what they get in return from using from us. is this like mobile based app or desktop or both or what like i'm yeah, curious what the need is for an app with this yeah um, i'm sorry web app it's a it's a it's a desktop app um, oh, gotcha. the the vast vast majority of people use us on their website so we haven't really considered mobile uh friendliness mm -hmm. or anything really um i mean granted it is but if you're creating policies, we just found like 98% of our users go to desktop to do yeah. it. So we'll probably stay focused on that. But, uh, but you know, if, if privacy goes like hardcore and that there's like a new law passing every week, heck, maybe we do launch a mobile app just to keep our customers more in the know if they want to be like something gotcha. they could access right from their phone. But, but right now that's not in the cards. What's the, um, where are the, like, I had to phrase it like this, but the folks who are causing the biggest stir in the privacy realm, you mentioned California, 
Are there other states that are not culprits of privacy, but just ones that are leading the charge on this? Are there certain countries? I mean, obviously, yeah. we've, we've talked in depth in the past about everything that happened at the start of all of this, really, with the GDPR compliance and yep. everything in the EU. But it sounds like certain states are actually pursuing this more aggressively than maybe countries. I don't know. You tell me where where are like the 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 critical areas that are, yeah. are privacy focused. Yeah. That's a really good one. Um, so, so in the U S it's California without a doubt, um, California, not it, California has three privacy laws, CIPA, CPRA and C, um, and Calopa. And, um, and there's, you know, lawyers suing under it, under CIPA. So that would be where I would say is the primary focus. And as a reminder, everyone, Privacy laws protect people. They don't care where your business is located. So mm -hmm. if you're sitting there thinking, oh, great, I'm not in California. Well, no, that's you're not technically out of the dark yet because if your website gets traffic from Californians, then those laws can apply to you. Um, and that's why this stuff is so complex because regardless of where you're located, what matters is whose data are you collecting. But um, in the U.S., without a doubt, it's California. Granted, there's like 12 other states, I think, at the time of this recording that have laws um, that are either passed and gone into effect or, um, or, or are about to go into effect. Um, I, if I, if you're asking me for prediction, I think New York will be next. I think New York will pass a bill. Um, they have several bills out right now. One of them in particular, I think will pass and it's going to allow New Yorkers to sue any website owner located anywhere for collecting as little as an email address and a contact form. Um, I do believe that one is going to pass. Um, and then I think that's just like what we saw with accessibility lawsuits out in New York. I think we're going to see the same with, um, privacy. Um, in Canada, I would say specifically right now it's Quebec. Uh, Quebec's Bill 64 just turned into Quebec Law 25. Um, and that's a new privacy law that a lot of people in Quebec are, are, are pretty uh, uh, concerned about. Um, we've had a major uptick in Quebec uh, businesses uh, getting set up with us. And then in Europe, um, specifically the EU, and even more specifically, I'd say Germany tends to be uh, where the most people come from uh, for uh, complaining about privacy rights. So there's like little blip, blips of uh, areas uh, where I would say it's the highest uh, amount of uh, penalties being issued yeah. uh, right now at the time of this recording. So explain how this works, Hans, because I'm trying to think if you have a cookie consent and somebody mm -hmm. denies, mm -hmm. what happens if they submit a contact form? So or, uh, yeah. would they get kicked out of that potentially? Yeah. How does that work? Yeah. So um, cookie consents exist to get what's called explicit consent, meaning they are opted out by default of tracking technologies like YouTube videos can't play until they click accept all where they've consented to their information behind the scenes from being shared, collected and shared with third parties. So you remember how earlier we're talking about their state, like group one, which is like data that's typed out and submitted to us. But then there's group two stuff behind the scenes. Cookie consents are to manage the stuff behind the scenes to get consent first before we let those things behind the scenes run. I Whereas see. a contact form is more that other group where they're typing out their data. So that's not really involving a cookie consent. Okay. What I would say is a good practice is always having a checkbox that says, I agree to the privacy policy. Granted, gotcha. not all laws require that, but just for simple purposes, if you're like, I don't want to think any further, what should I do? Add a checkbox to your pri your contact forms that say, I agree to the privacy policy, because that gives you a timestamp the moment someone consented to your privacy policy when submitting their data to you. That's so. that's gold. That's genius. Cool, cool. cool. So, yeah, and I know cookie consents are not everyone's favorite things. I, I'll withhold my own opinions on them, um, you know, but uh, but, you know, what I can say is they exist to comply with laws like I would if you don't like them, I still would be my recommendation to agency owners is let the client decide if they want them or not. Yeah, like yeah. don't even though we may not like them, like the client should be the one to decide if they want to comply with laws or not. So if they want to take it down, just make sure you have it in writing. Is there a um, cash on your guys's or with other cookie consents on like. Because as a course creator, I'm like, I don't want to have people have to accept that every time they log on to my site to, to watch a video. So are there, yeah, are they cached within several days yeah. or weeks or how does that work? Yeah. So you can set it with term again. And I'd imagine most compliant consent tools, you can set how often do you want to reshow the map, but uh, reshow the consent tool. Um, and typically most people just do it by session. So unless the user clears their own browser cache, they're not going to see it again. Okay. And that's, that's what helps limit the exposure of it. Um, whereas other companies may say, you know what, show it to them every two months just to kind of keep it fresh on their mind. And, and okay. really, in my opinion, what matters most is you at least get one level of consent, like so that they 
got their choice. They made their choice. Um, and, and they can change their selections later by clicking the fingerprint icon or the privacy settings hyperlink. But, but yeah, you, you can set that, um, Josh. Yeah. Cool. That's great. That's great to know, especially yeah, for anyone who has videos, uh, if there's a site that somebody's going to be returning back to often. Yeah. Yes. As from a yeah. user, I, I'm so, I'm so big on conversion and user experience that I try to, uh, kind of highlight and get that all in place first. I try to kind of optimize for that Yep. with the idea that accessibility, privacy, and everything else is, is in line as much as possible too. For sure. Consent tools can definitely uh, create a, a bump in the road when it comes to conversions and marketing and all that, because it, by default, they lock, they opt website visitors out of analytics data and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, I think this is where kind of like where I what, what I believe is going to happen. I believe that 10 years from now, we're going to look back at these times and be like, remember when we used to kind of just collect people's data and do whatever we want with it? I think 10 years from now, we're going to think that way. And I'll give you an example, you know. 10 years ago from today, um, or 10 years in the past, when I was running my agency, SSL certificates, they were not mm. a thing that you anyone ever really did unless you needed e-commerce. Yeah. You know, anything beyond that was just kind of like, okay, it's kind of nice to have. And like nowadays, if you go to a site that's not SSL secure, you don't feel secure. Like it's questionable. And, and I think we're going to see the same with privacy. Like right now, we're agency owners who've been implementing these free tools that help track users. And, and that's not a bad thing. It's just that like, there's a lot of data harvesting going on behind the scenes, you know, in our own little way, we are those people that are mass calling or max testing people just like not, not as intrusively, Actually, you know, yeah. like we're sharing data though with companies who use that data for advertising. And so, so I, I say all that to say that like cookie consents are what gives you that ability to get consent. However, if you're thinking like, how do I avoid a cookie consent? You absolutely can. And I'll give you a good example for YouTube videos. Instead of embedding YouTube.com videos, embed YouTube-NoCookie.com videos. That mm. is YouTube's cookie-friendly alternative. And now you don't need consent to load cookie, uh, YouTube videos. Oh, um, I didn't know that. So, so that's a non-tracking format. And most tools these days offer a privacy-friendly embedding option. Just embed the privacy-friendly options. Mm. Um and my gosh, you may find yourself not needing to get consent at all, and you've really not changed anything about your website. Um, it's just implementing the privacy-friendly versions of things. Um, I had yeah. no idea you could I do that. I'm going to make sure we include this in the show notes. I have a. Cool. I'm looking at a link right now on how to do that. Cool. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and, and you could use Fathom Analytics instead of Google yep. Analytics because they're GDRP compliant and don't track IP. So. Uh, that's another way to bypass a cookie consent. Exactly. Exact. So by the way, as you well know, in my maintenance plan course, I recommend that all of my students use Termageddon as an add-on to the plan. Like it's just, cool. it's another add-on a cell for the different tiers of maintenance plans. And you could say like if a client wants to do really robust type of privacy stuff, or they really don't want uh, cookie consents, you can say, well, we could do that. It's a, it's an add on, or it's a, it's a different level of, of support because it is a little, it's a little more tricky to embed the privacy centric yes. videos. Um, so there's almost different ways to like factor in privacy in, in your plans, in your builds, either at, all at once or in an ongoing plan. I agree. And, and yeah, I definitely would say like, if I was, if I was a term again partner, I would either do the affiliate program to take advantage of the complimentary onboardings. That's one thing we do where we can walk the customer through the entire setup and then share the license with the partner at the end of the setup call. And then we pay the partner recurring commission. So with the affiliate program, partners spend nothing out of pocket. You just have clients sign the waiver and connect them to us when they say they want to get set up with term again, super smooth process. But if you're like, you know what, I want to make some more recurring profit, which is kind of where I found my myself as an agency owner, I would go the reseller route. I charge 300 bucks setup fee um, and, and then charge the $119 a year and buy from Termageddon at $42 a year and make the difference. Or I buy a bulk deal. But 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 to confirm, agency partners can buy one at a time from us at wholesale. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, that setup fee is where I think it's best used um, because yeah, there's more, it takes time to create policy pages, copy and paste the codes and the cookie consents in particular tend to be very grabby. I mean, that's what they are. They're doing, they're basically trying to break everything on a website. So <laughs> yeah, make sure time is allotted to install the cookie consent too. What are some of their areas that 
myself or web designers may not be thinking about as far as privacy goes on websites. We've covered a lot. See, one question I had, which I posed initially was like, yeah, where are the leaks in a website yeah. that could, could be a red flag for potential lawsuits or something? Well, I think we've covered most everything to this point with the idea of like front end and back end. But yeah, are there are any other places on a website or things that are implemented that are glaring like, Oh, actually that could be an issue or like the YouTube embed thing. I didn't realize mm -hmm. there was an option for that. So, um, I, I would say that we've done a pretty good job at covering, um, in, in general where privacy becomes an issue. It's stuff that's submitted by users forms, whether it's contact forms, newsletters, sign up forms, digital product downloads, um, or e-commerce, mm -hmm. And stuff then behind the scenes, which are typically embed this, um, video embeds, uh, map embeds, analytic embeds, and, and sec um, security embeds like reCAPTCHA, which there is alternatives like friendlycaptcha.com. Um, and then uh, advertising tracking uh, behind the scenes. So I, I feel like th those are, that's like 99% of our typical customer in terms of like, data collection. Um, what I would say would be interesting to talk about, or just at least make note of is that, you know, terms, otherwise known terms of service, terms and conditions, that's an area where you can have a DMCA disclosure, which stands for the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. And basically, it's a statement that says, hey, if any, if you see any content um, on our website, that's not our property, rather than suing us, just let us know and we'll mm. remove it from the site. Um, you know, it's certainly not like a get out of jail free card. Like I wouldn't just recommend doing that in your terms than just copying everyone else's stuff and putting on your site. No, I don't recommend that, but has it proven to get people uh, to help create a, what's called a safe Harbor for businesses and help protect them from lawsuits. Absolutely. It has. So, so um, I like a terms for virtually any website, um, yeah. but it, the real intent of a terms is to limit your liability as a website owner. What about copyright, like blatant copyright infringement, stealing courses, stealing eBooks, stealing any information, I mean, I, I've been public about one of my courses being ripped off years ago and we actually came up, I, I was hired, I hired a company. I don't know if we've talked about this. I hired a company. It was 300 bucks a month mm -hmm. for this company to get my course off of these platforms that just started spreading. And I just wonder how the hell people sleep at night when they do this crap, because literally I'm paying $3,600 a year, just mm -hmm. extra, just getting these sites ticked down by this, this one company. That was only for one course. Out of curiosity, um, is it helping? It did like, help. I, yeah, I stopped only, awesome. it did help, but it didn't help fully. It was like, okay. you get a lot of them off and then you could search it and you could see like eight, you know, uh, at the bottom, it would be like, this is copyright and friends. We've removed eight sources. The only problem yeah. was it just didn't stop completely. So what we actually did in, in my community web designer pro shout out to Michelle, my SEO guru there, we came up with an action plan to get reviews from all my students who had been through the course, who I knew would be open to posting a blog post about that course. And they did. We had, I think we had over a dozen students write a big meaty blog post that was not copy and paste it, but real authentic content, real results. And now it actually has like taken up the first few scrolls of Google. That's awesome. Before you That's get to awesome. uh, ripped off. But how are these people not in jail? <laughs> like, can I, we I, freaking I, sue every one of these people like to their dying in? Uh, like, what can we do? You know what I mean? Like if, if, a mom and pop pizza shop is getting a lawsuit. They just started a GoDaddy site. They didn't know what the heck was going on. Meanwhile, you got, you know, this, this group of people who are ripping courses off and then yeah. are they getting sued? Help me, Hans. Help me. Yeah. <laughs> help me. Have you ever seen Dexter? Yes. Uh, killer killer who, or the, the killer who kills serial killers. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm on a mission to make these people pay uh, <laughs> for hurting the good people of the world. So tell me about that. For sure. So, you know, I think that's a lot more on the, um, uh, like on the, uh, offensive side where we're going after the people that are stealing. And that's not something I advocate for. And that's mm -hmm. exactly why I, I have my own little disclaimer for like, you know, a, a, a DMCA disclosure is not a get out of jail free. Like it does not give you a green light to just start stealing stuff from other people. So my knowledge comes much more from the defense side, which is like putting things in place to limit our liability as website owners. So although I don't have an exact answer for you right now at this moment, Josh, I 
bet Donata would. So well, I, I was say, just going to ask, can we, can we stick Donata on them? Because I bet she so, would be ruthless. And she's out of the office literally. Or, like, I, like we have an office. She's out of the house literally right now. Um, but I'm going to have her call you tonight. And I'm going to have your better half on next. And we're going to yes. talk about how to make copyright <laughs> infringement people pay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Digital fees. No, because yeah. it's not fun when people take your hard-earned work and do things with it. And that's why this stuff exists. That's why copyright infringement exists. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Um, do some people do it unknowingly? Yes. But I get a vibe that people are knowingly doing it um, to what you've created. Um, oh, there's, a, to, there's totally, to a totally a profit driven endeavor that they're doing. Yeah, there's too. a totally different thing when you like rip somebody's course off or rip somebody's yeah. gated material and post it on a site that's like discountcourses.com versus, you know, my client Googles, if my client's a steel company and they Google a picture of a steel building and put it on their site to represent steel. That's a whole yeah. different, a whole different ball game for sure. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I have Donata to call you. Obviously she'll preface it with, you know, please note this is not legal advice, but this is exactly what I would do for next. That could be a very, so. very fun podcast. <laughs> Or bring her on. Yeah, there, she's always down to chat with you. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll be happy to say Takedown Czar is the company I use. And they did a good job. Like I said, they just, I was just the point where I'm like, I'm paying freaking 300 bucks a month yeah. for this. And it is working, but it's not working all the way. And they basically said, like, we do our best. Um, you know, I, I hate yeah. to say it, but to be honest, I'm I'm kind of happy to hear it's only 300 a month. I thought it was going to be like 3,000 a month. And this seemed, it seemed very, like this type of... Um, process that you just described i thought this was like only reserved for like you know the the the, the cbs's of the world or like super rich yeah, i mean and that like, was back in 2019 and 20 when i used okay. them i used them for i think about a year and a half so okay but still i mean oh god this is gonna get me fired up now so <clears throat> let's see let's say a year and a half so 18 months 300 times 18 out of pocket i paid well over $5,000 just monthly, just to, to get these taken off. But that's not including the amount of time that I invested in that. That's not including the amount of time that I had to, to yeah, thankfully, man. a lot of my members of Web Designer Pro and students who have been through my course were cool enough to take time out of their day to make these website, uh, these course reviews for me. Um, but then there's, and you have an awesome that, community. Like, oh, I mean, let's be real. like the, the incredible. Josh Hall community is locked tight together. It's oh, awesome. Dude. I just, yeah, so. they're, they're just incredible. Like they're my tribe. They're amazing. Yeah. And, and what was exciting to me is to see how fired up they got, um, yeah. you know, but, and then also <laughs> the thing with that too, is just like, I don't know how many people are trusting a, a one of those janky sites because you have to mm -hmm. download something that was stolen and pirated, which means what else are you downloading? Talk about privacy and everything else you are exposing your, like if anyone yeah. right now is listening to this, I don't know how many people listen to this who are of the type who are downloading illegal content, but um, you're here to talk about data exposure, like good luck downloading something like that. Oh uh, yeah. No, when you download from sketchy sites, like you, you, haven't found it. You haven't realized the value of your own personal data. Yet. You, <laughs> have not, you, you have not come to terms with yes. you, your own data matters. Um, yeah. Cause you're just playing roulette every time you do that type of yeah, stuff. So. Yeah. And, and, and the cost for that, I mean, uh, yeah, it was, it was reasonable, but yeah, for, I mean, but that was one course, you know, like a suite. Of and and, so I and do don't that. get me wrong. Oof. Five grand is not, that's not a skip in the park. I mean, that's, that's a lot of money still. I, I, I guess it just in my, my, uh, my own mind, I, it felt like just something like, Oh, there's a bunch of attorneys scanning websites that just sounded extremely expensive to me. $300 a month is not fun. That's, yeah. that's painful considering it's just to get your stuff back. <laughs> like it's not even like, yeah, right. not to, like grow your business. It's literally just to like stop people from stealing from you. Like that's, yeah. no, that's not fun. But, uh, and, but the reality is going back and that's another highlight of the importance of privacy is like these kind of yeah. things. Like if there weren't privacy laws, which yes, it's a pain in the ass for web designers a lot of times, but the, the opposite of that is what happened to me and what happened to a lot of other people who have their content ripped off is pirates run free digitally and could do anything they want. That is, that is an even scarier world that's yeah. more frustrating and, and even worse off than having pretty rigorous privacy laws. So in a is way, like it's a good reminder for me, like anytime I'm frustrated by cookies consents or whatever, I'm like, you know what? The opposite is, is this situation of. Yeah. Well, so, free yes. Stuff. Cookie consents are defending us from us, our, our world becoming like a black mirror episode. So let's just all <laughs> keep that in mind. <laughs> but, um, 
you know, I, I, this is not a space I'm knowledgeable with these courses, though. I know there's like a lot of pre-made course type systems. Like, do they offer the ability to somehow like watermark the video, like or somehow like secretly code the video? So if that video were to be uploaded, you could draw it all the way back to who originally created it. Maybe that's like insane thinking. But. I mean, there's definitely it's almost reminds me of like a chain code from Star Wars where there's like the authentic I mean, I guess it would be like an NFT or something, right? It's like digital art that gets repurposed or stolen or is sold through. I'm not into that world, but you know, any like a piece of art that is is distributed. If you a want way to, get to the, identify it, yeah, the original one is like the it's like the IP address for a court. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, from what I know, and, and the folks who I talk to who are pretty far into the developer side of things, they said pretty much they could rip off anything if they really wanted to. Yeah. The question is though, yeah, what's new and what's coming down the road as far as that goes. And I don't know personally how to, how to go about that. So it's not even a matter of being um, like it, like a watermark on a video. It wouldn't matter. You could do something with screenshots if you really wanted to. So um, yeah. And then there's another thing too. It's like, what is chat GPT and other language models and AI stuff, what are they picking up? Are they picking up course content that's privacy or should be gated? I don't know. I don't know hmm. how that works either. Case in point, if somebody chat GPT some of my course content, will that pick up some of the illegal, you know, some of my stuff that was distributed illegally? I don't know. I don't know how that works. Interesting. Um, which we definitely why, I'm in more why, interesting. why I'm going from like, as much as my courses are life changers for people, I've realized like the true value and the education side of thing online now is community and coaching uh, courses mm. are kind of the entry point. Now information, information has been, information has shifted from like the end all, like that's where you end up. You end somewhere to get the information to information is the start of a transformation. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. That makes a lot of sense. Well, it, yeah, because everything is constantly changing, especially in our industry. I mean, it, just in general, everything changes for the, you know, to constant improvements and stuff. But yeah, the, the community is what allows for um, strengthening for the long term, in mm -hmm. my opinion. So, yeah, I guess that's not that of strong of, I mean, it sounds more factual. No, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, but. it's, yeah. I mean, you can, the, look, the reality is you can steal content, information, courses, but you can't steal a community and you can't yeah. steal coaching. Um, same right, thing with clients, by the way. What's the, yeah, there that we go. Oh yeah. Once me and Donata partner up and we start, <laughs> you know, I, you know, she can be the actual, I'll, I'll be the, I'll be the loud voice. And then, uh, and then she, she can will, be the enforcer. She'll be the enforcer. Yeah. She'll be the one showing up on people's doors. Yeah. <laughs> And I'll be like, she's wild. You are. <laughs> be careful. This is coming to you. You got what you deserve. Uh, well, before we get kicked off YouTube, yeah, that's, this is great, man. This, in all honesty, like this conversation has really shed some light on the, the differences of types of privacy and awesome. cookies and scent and how it works. I hope this gives some clarity to people. And, and yeah, I was just kind of curious. Oh, there's a kitty. Yeah, that all, was the meow. All pets are welcome on the web. Event. I've got one of my goldens is here wanting to get out. It's starting to thunder right now. So I think it's freaking her out. But oh, um, I, I think uh, our Chicago weather just hit you. Uh, uh, we had thunder you about three uh, hours ago. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like Jurassic Park over here. It sounds like there's a wreck outside. <laughs> so, um, well, anything else as we wrap this up, Hans, is uh, you're going to be coming in shortly after this. By the time we release this, you're going to be doing yes. uh, a guest expert training inside of Web Designer Pro. To, to like visually share some, some things uh, that, that we can do as web designers. But to, ca to cap this off, I'll make sure I link the waiver. Uh, some of the links we talked about, you know, my link, joshhall.co slash termageddon is our, our special offer for folks to be able to get signed up with you. And again, just everybody make it a part of your maintenance plan. It's an upsell. It's an add on. Anything else? Any final, final words of wisdom in privacy land for right now? You know, I feel like we covered so much, but I, I, I really just want to re-hit the message that like I, none of us got into building websites to deal with regulations, not a single one of us. Um, so we so there will be the opportunity to either embrace this stuff or to continue to pretend it doesn't exist. And my recommendation is to consider embracing it because all the signs are on the wall, like the paint. What is it? The paintings on the wall. All the signs are on the wall. What's that phrase? The writing's on the wall. There, there it is. is. I was going to say, that doesn't sound right, but I wouldn't trust myself. <laughs> I've been known to be kind of bad with those. The paintings things, are on the wall. The paintings are on the wall. On <laughs> uh, but yeah, the writing's on the wall. Like This stuff is becoming a bigger deal. 
learn now how to embrace it because just like how Josh has community and like things we learn from one another and like things we all grow together, like that's, what's going to happen with privacy. Like if you skip it now for a few more years and come in, it's just going to be that much more complex. Like take it, take a leap. You're in good hands. We'll take good care of you. If you want to try out Termageddon, you know, get two free licenses for life and uh, hopefully you can make some recurring revenue while helping your clients get protected. I can't wait to make a nice little quote image from this, this episode that says the painting is on the wall. <laughs> Is on oh, the this term again. There we go. <laughs> well, Hans, as always, man, what a blast making privacy fun since 2000. When did you guys start term again? 16. 16. Yeah. yeah. There's your tagline that I, I grant to you. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, until awesome, next time, buddy. man, we'll see you inside of Web Center Pro here in July. So if anyone is not yet a member of Pro, jump on in because we're going to be doing a live training and the replay will be available in the archives there. Uh, always <laughs> appreciate you, man, keeping me up. Uh, what's up? you know, up to date on what's going on here. So for sure, Josh, always a pleasure. Take care. Again, super boring conversation. Well, I shouldn't say that, but it was a boring topic, but I hope we made it lively and fun. There's no, I mean, look, if you're going to do some, if you're going to be in an industry or you're, you know, you have to deal with something like privacy policies, let's have as much fun as we possibly can. I so appreciate Hans and his wife, Donata, for being two just awesome personalities in this space because I normally wouldn't want to work with somebody who does privacy policies all day. But man, they're cool. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Go to the show notes for all the links mentioned. I know we did mention quite a few links here on this one. You can find that at episode 334, which will be at joshhall.co slash 334. And again, if you are not yet using Termageddon, go to joshhall.co slash Termageddon. Use my link because you will get, I think, again, a couple free accounts for your clients and use it as an upsell on your maintenance plan. It benefits your clients. You can build more recurring income or you can use it as a bonus just to give one more thing to uh, encourage clients to, to check out your maintenance plan. So definitely make sure you do that. All the links we cover, joshhall.co slash 334. And if you're catching this live, Hans will be inside of Web Designer Pro here this month in July of 2024, sharing ins and outs of website privacy policies. And if you're catching this later on, you'll be able to join Pro and watch that presentation in the video training archive, which features tons of guest expert trainings, which fill in the gaps that I don't cover in my courses. Uh, just because there are a lot of things that I don't have expertise in, like privacy policies. But Hans does, and you can get all that more inside of Web Designer Pro. All right, friends, see you on the next episode.